My name is Damiano Rossi, and I'm a technical application specialist uh, working for Dolomite. Dolomite is a microfluidy company based in Cambridge, uh, England, which is specialized in the design and manufacture of uh, microfluidic components and systems for different kinds of applications. Um, what we have here on this table, it's a microfluidic complete system for the production of PLGA particle for drug delivery application and drug encapsulation um, uh, for the synthesis of the particle in the size range of micro or nano size. Um, the webinar today is structured in two different parts. In the first part, I will uh, go through a presentation, PowerPoint presentation of about 10 minutes, and then uh, we'll, move, uh, we'll move on this table where I will show you uh, we'll introduce the system, we'll show you the several components, how to assemble them together, and the working principle of the, of the microfluidic device for PLGA synthesis. So uh, I'm going to move now to the uh, PowerPoint uh, presentation, which... <coughs> so the, as you can see from the title, um, the subject is... Um, uh, Microfluidic methods of PLGA particle synthesis for drug delivery application. Um, let's go to the first slide. Uh, so, just very very quick introduction about the company profile. So, we have um, we basically have systems to target different kind of applications predefined systems that are made by small microfluidic components. And these systems are suitable for like the one that we have today for, for instance, the production of polymer particles like PLGA, but other kinds of particles can be synthesized using our system like liposomes, uh, PEG particle, gold nanoparticle, and also this system is suitable for the production of emulsions or double emulsion for application in the food industry or cosmetics and pharmaceuticals. Um, the microfluidic small components that we have are kind of functional uh, part of the system, like pumps, uh, flow sensor, connectors, uh, interfaces, and um, obviously microfluidic chip glass devices. We also offer a solution for uh, design and fabrication of uh, custom parts, uh, like connectors and microfluidic chips. So if you have uh, specific needs of design, a specific uh, uh, microfluidic device, we can actually uh, custom made uh, this device for you. Um, so the word of microfluidics is a kind of vast word in terms of application. Um, most of the application are uh, in the droplets uh, production for cell encapsulation, simple emulsion production or double emulsion production. And starting from the production of droplets, we can use this technology to create beads of polymer, like PLGA, which is the content of this presentation. And also, uh, we can have other kind of particles, like nano-sized particles, hydrogels, microfluidics is suitable in the, can be used in the world of oil and gas, or petrochemistry and point-of-care diagnostics. Um, but why are we using uh, microfluidic for the synthesis of uh, particle? Why is it kind of important? So if we think about the traditional method of uh, producing particle using large batch uh, vessel or reactor, one of the problems that we have in, when using this, um, this, um, this method is the fact that uh, the profile of uh, concentration and temperature are not very uniform. So we have point in the volume uh, that where the supersaturation, the concentration is different as compared to the other point. And therefore, if you have a nucleating system like the one that, uh, like for particle production, um, we don't have a, a resulting final size distribution of the particle which is uniform because there are points where nucleation is triggered before as compared to other points where nucleation is it's, uh, it's initiated uh, afterwards, and therefore we end up with a system which is polydispersed. So we'll have to filter the system to target, uh, to achieve, or to collect the particle that we want. Um, so it's not an efficient way of producing particle. 
Um, we want in pharmaceutical industry particles that have all the same size are monodispersed and we can actually also like to have a, a control over the size range that we want to achieve. And this is something that can be easily done using a microfluidic approach that is the one that we propose here for the PLGA synthesis. So there are different methods, uh, I'm going to show you later on which one, for micro droplet production of PLJ and also nano size uh, PLJ particle. But basically, um, using a microfluidic approach, we can achieve highly monodispersed particle a tunable, of tunable size, and also, most, it's quite important, uh, we can have a consistent reproducible uh, particle size production. Um, here, an example of the um, two uh, kind of particle that we can get uh, with a traditional batch method of synthesis. Uh, on the left side, you can see that the particle are not mono, are not mono dispersed, as, uh, quite poly dispersed, as compared to the other case in which the particle synthesis is very uniform. You can see that the particle are all the same size. Um, this is because in a microfluidic channel, in laminar condition, we can set a specific residence time and we can let the particle grow up to, I mean, until a certain, uh, a certain size in a controllable and, and a tunable way. Um, so let's move to the PLGA uh, part um, of the presentation. So as you all know, PLGA is quite it's very common uh, polymer which is uh, using a drug delivery application and drug encapsulation. We can encapsulate, uh, incorporate hydrophilic and aerophobic drugs. It's FDA approved and is composed by two monomer, lactic acid and glycolic acid that can be can form the polymer in different ratio. But basically when, this, uh, when the drug is incorporated within the polymer and the polymer is uh, entering to the organism, it's uh, basically it goes into the metabolic pathways, releasing the uh, encapsulated drugs. Um, so let's see uh, the two systems that we propose for PLGA particle system, for PLGA particle uh, production. So both systems are basically composed by the main components, like pressure pump, pressure driven pump, microscope, uh, an interface where we can plug the microfluidic core, uh, microfluidic the core chip. So we have two main chip, one for the nanoparticle production of PLGA, which is based on the sort of uh, the one on the bottom uh, left side, um, particularly suitable for the PLGA synthesis of uh, particle in the nanoscience range from a few nanometer up to almost one micron. And then the other one, which is uh, the design of a droplet chip, which is particularly suitable for the production of PLGA in the micro size range between 20 and 50 micrometer. Um, so if we go into the, det the detail of the two uh, system, Let's start from the experimental uh, setup of the uh, PLGA uh, microparticle system. So um, basically, um, the PLGA in this system is dissolved into dichloromethane, the solvent, uh, and this, um, this solution is basically placed inside the, uh, the reservoir of a small uh, of a pressure pump, which I'm going to show you later. And then we use an anti another solvent, which is water with a bit of surfactant, which is introduced in another pump. So the two pumps deliver the fluid using uh, uh, tubing uh, of a diameter around 0.25 millimeter uh, within uh, a glass uh, solid uh, uh, device, um, where basically, since the two fluids are immiscible, almost immiscible, um, they are pushed into a, a junction point where droplets break up a core and we produce particles, uh, particle of PLGA having all the same size in a reproducible way. And I will show you later in, uh, when uh, I will uh, introduce the system that we can actually tune this particle size quite easily by changing the ratio of the two 
fluids that are mixed. Uh, we can collect the PLGA particle on a, on a vial or on a glass light and gently evaporate the DCM to shrink the particle down to the desirable size. And this is something that is, we have done uh, internally, there are application notes, and it's been done also in the literature. Um, if we want to produce PLJ particle in the nano size range, we, use, we need to use another uh, technique, but we can still use the same uh, uh, core component that formed the setup that I showed you just before. And so we can use we can still use the same pressure pump, but in this case we play with a different microfluidic device, which is the uh, so-called five input chip, which uh, can be placed within the interface, which is the same interface that uh, we used for the previous system. Uh, in this case, um, instead of dissolving uh, PLGA in DCM, we dissolve the PLGA in acetone, and we use water again. Uh, as a, an antisolvent to trigger the nucleation of PLGA within the, within the channel. So PLGA, acetone, and water are uh, miscible one on each other, and therefore we can um, we can um, uh, trigger the nucleation of uh, of the nucleation of the particle that flow within uh, within the channel. Uh, so um, here. That's basically everything about uh, the setup, uh, uh, but I will uh, present this setup later on the experimental part. Um, so uh, the microfluidic method that we have for PLJ particle uh, synthesis are particularly suitable for the incorporation, the encapsulation of drugs, uh, both hydrophobic or hydrophilic, as long as those drugs are dissolved into the solvent. Um, uh, into the solvent, initial solvent, acetone or, uh, or DCM. Uh, we have a method for uh, encapsulation of hydrophilic drugs uh, using a slightly different system which, to produce core shell particle using basically a double emulsion uh, droplets production, which is not a uh, content of this webinar, but uh, if you visit our website or well, you can drop us an email, we can discuss this application as well. Um, so in conclusion, um, going to the last slide, the system that we have are flexible. We can use the system for PLJ particle, but also for other, for the synthesis of other uh, particle, like liposomes or hydrogel that, for instance, are useful in uh, drug delivery application. Are, easy to use, we can swap from one system to the other system by simply plugging into the interface a specific uh, geometry of the microfluidic device which is which characterize the final application. Are reliable uh, and also scalable. And I will show you uh, how we can scale up the system that we, uh, that we have here to produce uh, high throughput of particle synthesis. So if we go to the um, table again, I will uh, basically introduce the system that we had here, going through the several components uh, that uh, characterize the system. So here on the table we have uh, three main elements, a software which controls the pressure pumps, one and two here, and then there is a microfluidic device which is placed in this small interface, metal interface, uh, underneath the uh, high speed microscope, digital microscope that we have here. So let's start from the pressure pump here. Uh, those ones are uh, pressure driven pump. Uh, it means that the fluid is delivered from the pump to the chip using not there's no mechan there are no mechanical elements that basically are, uh, uh, that are used to move the fluid. So they work as a, basically the fluid are contained within those uh, uh, chamber, one and two. We have two pumps, one which contains uh, the PLGA, this one, the PLGA uh, in DCM solution, and then the other one which contain the water and a bit of surfactant. 
So the system that we have here is the one for uh, micro uh, uh, PRJ micro particle synthesis, which is based on the droplet method uh, on the droplet chip. Um, so uh, let's say we can open this pump and see that inside the pump there is a vial which contains the solution of uh, uh, PLGA in DCM. This vial can be inserted inside the chamber and then there is a, a small tube of a diameter about 0.25 millimeter which goes inside the vial, it's dipped inside the solution. We can seal this chamber and then uh, these pumps are very accurate and smooth pressure regulator. The, the pressure is adjusted within the, uh, the reservoir, the chamber, uh, to push the fluid within the tube from the vial to the microfluidic unit. And this is the same for the other pump. So the fluid goes inside the flow uh, rate sensor, which reads uh, the, the flow rate and adjusts the pressure in order to meet the desired flow rate. Uh, the flow rate can be set using the software or using manually can be set on the display of the pump. So we can simply play with the flow and the pump will uh, smoothly adjust the pressure to deliver uh, the flow rates that we want. Since those pumps are pressure driven pump, they will have to be connected to a, a gas supply. So in this case, there is a compressor underneath the table. But in case you want to work uh, with Helion or Argo, we can simply plug um, the pump to a, to a gas cylinder which contains Argon and Helion. Um, so the fluids goes from the pump to the microfluidic device using those tubes, one and two. One, this one, which delivers the PLGA solution into the chip as one valve and you, that it's just a shut-off valve that you can use to interrupt the fluid, and you can do the same for the other one. Uh, the water phase is equally divided into two streams using a, a T-split, uh, and then we those tubes goes to the chip. Uh, droplet production occurs within the chip, and then the droplets that are produced goes into these outlet tubes inside the vial here. And we can actually see this milky solution of uh, uh, droplet of PLG and DCM uh, dispersed into water phase. Uh, we can actually evaporate the DCM and get the particle of PLG of desirable size. Um, we can uh, move with this stage, uh, with XY stage, um, the droplet, I'm oh, sorry, the chip, and focus on different part of the of the glass microfluidic device, uh, which is placed, as I said, in front of this ISP digital microscope. Uh, we can focus the microscope uh, using this um, uh, knob, and also there is a magnification part here um, where we can increase the magnification on. Uh, simply by rotating this part. Um, if we have a closer look, look at, the, at, the, at the chip, um, let's see, we can't really see the droplets being produced, uh, but we will, uh, I will show you later on the software, but basically the two streams of water that are equally divided on the T-split approach the T-junction together with the PLG and DCM solution. And then the, the droplet breakup of course at the junction point and then droplets are produced and collected into the vials here on the on the on my left side. Um, the chip can be clamped using uh, this small clip. And as you can see it's um, basically contained or mounted into this metal interface, which fluidically seal uh, in the entire structure and allows a uh, fluidically seal connection between the tubing and the internal channel of the, of the device. So this is, as I said, is a device suitable for uh, micro droplet or uh, PLJ micro droplet production. If we want to uh, 
uh, use uh, produced droplet or sorry particle PLG of nano size range, we will simply have to use this uh, five input chip, which is here, um, where basically use another glass uh, microfluidic device, which can be as the same dimension of the previous one, but as just a different channel structure. Uh, so you can simply remove uh, the glass microfluidic device, unscrewing the linear connector there, and then plugging inside again, like that. And then you just need to tighten the linear connector. So you can simply swap from one to the other one uh, and change your particle kind of synthesis by uh, removing the, the core microfluidic unit. As you can see here, those ports allow uh, fluidically, uh, a fluidically sealed connection between the tubing and, uh, and the internal uh, channels of the chip that are placed on the edge side of the glass device. Um, okay, so now we will move to the um, software part. And I will show you basically how to control everything using uh, the software. Uh, this is the Flow Control Center software, um, which is um, the Dolomite uh, software dedicated to the control of the pressure pumps and also allows the visualization of the of the droplets being produced at the junction point of the of the chip that I just showed you before during the experimental part of the webinar. It is composed by three main tabs. The one on the top left side, which is dedicated to the control of the PLGA in DCM flow rate, which is now set at five microliter per minute and corresponding driving pressure of about 500 millibar. And the one on the right, part of the screen, which control the stream of water, and now is set at 30 microliter per minute and the corresponding pressure of 1,700. And then the last one on the bottom left side on the of the screen, which shows the video of the droplet that I produce at the junction point of the glass device. Uh, the PLJ stream or droplet phase come from the left central channel and approach the two lateral stream of immiscible water and surfactant. Uh, and then the droplet breakup occurs at the pinch point of the junction where you can see the droplets are consistently produced. Um, in this particular case, the droplet has a size of about 80, 100 micrometer more or less, uh, which is the same size of the, of the junction point that we have here. Um, I can actually show you quite quickly uh, that we can tune the droplets of PLGA, the diameter of this droplet, by simply changing the flow rate ratio between the two flows. So if we, let's say, change, uh, increase the flow rate of the PLGA from 5 to 20, let's say, we can see that the droplet uh, phase frequency increase immediately, and also the droplet becomes much larger. In this case, we have droplets of about the same size of the outlet channel which is around under 50 micrometer. You can see how quickly and smooth is the response time of the pressure pumps and reliable amount of spares are the droplets that we can produce. Um, obviously, there is a limit of droplet size that we can generate playing with the flows, the surfactant and the PLJ concentration. If we want to obtain very small PLGA uh, particle, we need to use small, uh, very small chip junction. For this reason, we supply a different, a different range of chips geometry for different range of PLJ particle sizes, from a few micron up to 100 micron. But basically, the working principle of all of them is the, is the same. Uh, so we, I'll just show you now the software and uh, Come back to the table, and I just want to discuss as the last things. Um, uh, so one of the limits of uh, microfluidic is the fact that uh, we can achieve a very high throughput. 
uh, of particles. So if you want a lot of particles, since we are dealing uh, with very narrow channel geometry and very small flow rates, we need to basically find a solution. And so the solution that we uh, adopted in the Dolomite uh, to scale up the droplets production is to use, uh, instead of obviously increasing the channel size, which we can't do that, otherwise we will lose the benefit of working in a microfluidic uh, environment, uh, to scale up the droplet or the particle production rate, we need to place more than one junction uh, working in parallel for the same consistent droplet production. And this is something that we have done when we developed this uh, manifold device, which is commercially available and uh, known as Talos. It's this manifold device here. So uh, this um, device can be connected to the same pressure pump here and it is composed by in this case there are two but we can put more uh, chips here you can see those chips have uh, uh, each of them have uh, seven junction and each uh, uh, each chip has seven junction and each junction produce the same uh, the same droplets of the same frequency and the same uh, of the same size so uh, the flow which enters from here, both the PLGA and DCM and, and the water, it's equally spread across this, the, the, the chip and then uh, it reach the, the junction for the consistent production of droplets. Um, so each chip, as I said, contains seven junctions. We can put up to uh, 10 chips together and reaching 70 junctions working together. Um, so with this device, we can obtain a droplet production of about liter per, per, per day, where and kilos per day of droplets of PLGA. Whereas in this other case, is, this is more for R&D kind of uh, system, which is uh, we can still produce the same size of droplet, but the throughput is uh, about hundred times less. So let's say liter per day with this, and a few gram per day with the other one. Uh, when we are processing, since with the Talos system, we are processing a large amount of uh, uh, solution, we will have to use uh, a larger reservoir, like this one, where we can store uh, the fluid. Uh, uh, this reservoir contains uh, a few liters, so we can process liter of uh, solution using a microfluidic device, which offer uh, uh, consistent production of particle of monodispersed particle. Um, so I think this is almost everything I want uh, to share with you today. Um, yeah, the last thing, as you can see, the system are quite are quite flex flexible. You can move from uh, uh, microparticle synthesis to nanoparticle synthesis, and also you can easily scale up the particle production. Um, if you decide to purchase these systems, uh, we have a support team that can uh, obviously comes to your site to install uh, the systems and also to train you how to use it for several days. And then we have application notes that can be downloaded on the, our website, the Lomite website, which basically show how the system works. And there are literature studies that have been published with our uh, devices and our components. Um, we are attending uh, conferences, events, and workshops uh, around the world. Uh, you can come and join us. Um, you can find the list of the events that we are attending on the on the on the our website. And also, if you have any question, feel free to drop an email. Um, we will happy will be happy to reply uh, to answer your email. And for any other questions that you have. For related to this webinar, um, we will reply shortly. We have a, a chat, so you can drop your, you can just write your question there. We will reply after the webinar. And yeah, uh, that's everything for today. And thank you for attending this webinar. Bye bye.